What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 26 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Everchosen campaign. So as we saw last time, Korn demands sacrifice and sacrifice he did get as Kukar the Bloodhunter and Valkia the Bloody both faced off against some tough battles causing uh, pretty big damage to both their armies. It was a pretty glorious time that was had and uh, well hopefully more glorious times await both armies as Valkia continues her fight with the powerful exiles of Nahek faction and as Kukar heads to bloodier pastures uh, either to Lustria or possibly first to the uh, uh, to the eastern colonies here though I suppose we could also send the flying army there I haven't yet uh, decided uh, though we'll have to decide fairly quick as Kukar rapidly approaches and where he needs to go he is actually closer to this territory and somebody does also need to subjugate the the southern chaos wastes hmm gotta send more armies southward but anyway uh, in terms of what we gotta do this time around Gulator I was gonna fight a small battle with him between the episodes I was gonna attack Middenstag so that uh, we didn't have to do it on screen but just before I did I saw that Azag the Slaughterer and was right there we have been looking for him after all uh, there's no guarantee that he will actually fight rather than run, but he does have a Wa available to him as well, so perhaps he will fight. So, And we do have that to do. Kolek, you are going to continue moving, I guess. Hmm. Alright, now the thing to be considered, Kolek, you're going to have to sit here for quite a while until Grimgor respawn, respawns, rather, or we could get you moving through Katha. I'm not sure. Uh, I suppose what we could do is either send Village uh, village or uh, this little army back around to, uh, to Grimgor when he revives, or possibly both of them. We didn't dial up the endgame too hard, mostly because I've grown a little bit bored of the endgame that the uh, currently, uh, in its current form in this particular game i don't like the fact that it's generally just sort of samey and it's just a random army is popping up everywhere you know it takes me out of the immersion a little bit and i don't like fighting the same faction i feel like the best form of an end game would be uh, or uh, the best form of this type of endgame that we currently have would be most of the factions get a few uh, get a few things, but not old factions reviving. I don't know if that was an option in the uh, uh, in the selections when you start a campaign. I gotta check it again. I don't like how factions that you've destroyed revive. If that wasn't the case, you could just activate every single faction, every single endgame scenario, uh, keep it at a hundred or possibly fifty doesn't really matter just give them some extra armies but only to those arm factions uh, that still exist uh, giving them a nice little bump up in the late game but without you having to backtrack to old territories where you've already destroyed stuff I find that to be a little bit of a uh, hassle especially as those armies clearly come out of nowhere but anyway I uh, do tend to digress don't I let's see what else we got to move and then let's get fighting and with Gulator been a couple of episodes since we've seen him fight so uh, my as well get to that. Jaeger, you're going to move down to the Black Light Tower here. Valkia, you are going to sit. I'm a little bit tempted to send her to Dracula Spire just to heal up more. Because we don't know what will be here after. Okay, yeah, you know what? Maybe that'll be safer. Go to Dracula Spire where I'm sure you'll be able to heal up. Too bad we can't put uh, Lothar Blood Reaper into her army immediately, but he wouldn't be able to get the Chaos Strategist until rank 5 anyway. Too bad we don't still have that uh, buff that gives us uh, more uh, hero ranks, as it would be really nice to get that immediately. Malefex Rune Smasher, you are also uh, headed to Katha. I still haven't completely decided what else is going to be in your army, but this should or, this should be enough. Or headed to Lustria, rather. Or possibly the Southern Chaos Waste. I still don't know who's heading where. Uh, Kagan, you've gotten one of the Exalted Pink Horrors on the field, which is great. And you need to ferry this over to Village. I do, however, want to check whether you can get another one on the field. Okay, not for a while. All right, well, if it's not for a while, then away you go. Although, wait, actually, one more real quick check. Would you be able to recruit a train, or not a train, a Iron Demon for Samoth here? Not yet, but uh, in two turns you will, meaning you can ferry over to Village and then uh, recruit here. Hmm... More host of Jardy, you have... No, not quite yet. 
All right, I'm gonna have to wait a little bit on those, but we're getting there. Anyway, Kagan, you know where to go, sir. Uh, actually, no, I don't know where to go with you. Problem. Uh, this guy might go after you, so we have to stay probably near Howling Rock so that we uh, get reinforcements. Let's move you here near Howling Rock, then, if you get attacked. And I don't know, can we put you into ambush near an allied settlement? We would be able to if it was our settlement, but I'm not sure that we can... No, we can. Good, you can go and ambush. You're not going to ambush, but at least this way they don't know that you're here. Can't uh, lose that exalted uh, pink horror after we uh, spent all that time getting them on the field. Samoth, you are going to briefly attack Nashrax there and hopefully auto resolve that. Let's see what we got here. Heroic victory with medium casualties and one of our horsemen will die. Well, that's just rude. All right, we're going to probably fight that manually. You know, let's fight it manually real quick. We're just going to have the hell cannons do it at max speed. I probably should have fought this one between the episodes too, but I did fight one with Archeon between the episodes and I couldn't keep track. I didn't want to move every single army around between the episodes, but uh, yeah. While the auto-resolve keeps on screwing us, We'll need to fight a few of these, at least until the uh, Marauders and stuff are leveled up to Chaos Warriors. Then the auto-resolve should start going in a lot more in our favor for these armies, and then this won't uh, really be uh, nearly as necessary. Anyway, let's pop you all right here, spread you out a little bit so that you're attacking at slightly different times and at slightly different angles. Lo okay, that was... That, okay, no, 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 that was way up. Eh. Eh, maybe like so. They're not scaven, so they can't spawn on top of us anyway. Then we'll do this. We'll, pr ah, we'll probably just send all of our troops in anyway. All right. And you guys are good right there. Iron Demon, you can be along. And then all of you can be along. All right. Uh, am I missing anybody? Oh, I guess the Marauder Horses. You know what? Go to this side so that the enemy isn't spawning as much on that side. Then we'll get you all to fire at max speed. We will get to the... Marauder horses right here. I'm hoping that they can attack this tower. And you know what, Iron Demon? I know how effective you will be at attacking a tower like that, but give it a try. And let's move you all in. Let's start moving in and the Marauders as well. Not like we're under threat in any way. And continue working. Alright. Fire at the tower, all of you, please. And, ooh, this archer unit is actually firing on us. And good job to the archer unit, I suppose. We don't really care about the casualties and the marauder horses, because, frankly, they're most likely going to be deleted in this army anyway. And are you on a platform? You are on a platform. That's not a great place to be when we have the ability to summon fires down upon you. I don't think they'll move because of that. And is that the enemy summoning stuff? What was that? That's on effect. Hmm. I guess it doesn't much matter. Anyway, cannons, can you super fire again? Looks like it not. I am going to speed it up again. Speed it up a little bit. How's that, uh, that tower looking? Oh, wow, they're doing, like, no damage to it. And are you not able to fire it? Hmm, curious. I guess we could get the, uh, I guess we could get the hell cannons firing at least a volley on them. All right, fine. And we'll do that in a second. The Marauder Horseman, you can back away. Let's speed it back up to max, and yeah, it's going to take ages. All right, you two. As soon as this is done in 10 seconds, then you can fire. We should also be careful with our aspiring champions, lest they lose a unit or two, especially with our Hell Cannons firing. All right, fine. Let's tell them specifically, then, who to fire at. Like so, like so, like so, and like so, and then speed it back up to max. Firing champions, use your abilities, and ooh, range units are targeting our Iron Demon. Back you off until that's good. Uh, Exalted Hero takes a little bit of damage. Do we have spells available in this army? Not really. We have Soul Blight. We could probably force him to route a little bit faster or nothing else. Alright, how's that tower looking? It's now gone much easier to do it with the uh, Hell Cannons. Alright, infantry. Ah, we don't really need you. And everybody else? Eh, all of you target that orc boar boy unit, speed it up to max, and I think the battle should be over as soon as that unit is done for him. Because a Melkoth's on, I don't know, some unit. Spells. And there we go, boar boys are done for. Go over here and target those units. And ooh, aspiring champions, you're taking a little bit of damage. And back off. And destroy this tower here. Just so that it stops firing, at least they're fairly quick at that. And then target the boar boys, activate your boom ability. 
And, ooh, they're kind of missing most of their shots. Oh, that's interesting. Huh, all right, target these poor boys instead. All right, this also allow our aspiring champions to recover their... Uh, uh, recover their barrier. Come on. Good. Uh, retarget. And retarget. Yeah, this is the kind of battle I usually do between the episodes, because obviously, you know, it's silly. Oh, but everybody keep on firing. Are these all bony boys, or... Yeah, they're just summoning bony boys repeatedly. Which is how they're speeding this up a little bit. Ah, but it's okay. Alright, we can sweet gut summons of our own after all. You can start get that unit of biggins and aspiring champions and lords. You can also be in group one. And ooh. Alright, speed slow it back down. Be careful. Target that unit of air boys. Let's not have the aspiring champions get killed like this forsaken. Good. Speed it back up. We can't target those. Or maybe you can. Fire on that unit of air, boys. Good. Ah. Uh, all right. I'll I'll try a little harder to look for these between the uh, between the episodes. Certainly not a fight worth fighting, but we can find some fights worth fighting. Not to worry, as in proper fights. Good thing about the aspiring champions is that due to their low model count, you can do that and not really suffer any damage whatsoever. Damn, 500 to 500 kills on close to uh, two of the uh, cannons, and interestingly enough, it's those ones with the very high veterancy, or the Regiment of Renown, and the very high veterancy one, which does make sense. And due to all the buffs that uh, veterancy does confer. Alright, come on now. Gotta get to a Gulator's battle again, Stazag, which will actually be a proper fight. And I could buy the plan. Hmm. I could sack. Ah, uh, you know what? We don't really care about the money anymore. Uh, sword of something, and another student available as well. Can you. I'm actually not sure that we even need the students anymore. Well. I mean, yeah, it's it's unlikely... Oh, you already have one. It's unlikely that we'll ever get to all of these things being one, because, like I said, I feel like it needs, like, 800, so... Yeah, it's not super necessary. Do you have a student? I mean, we can keep putting him um, on heroes, as long as we get them. And I am a little bit curious to see if it's 800, whether it's achievable or not, realistic or not. Anyway, Gulator, are you the only one that remains other than Tamar? Yes, you are, but Tamar is being replaced by Demahar later on, so that's all not relevant. I should be looking at you. Gulator. All right, hopefully Azag doesn't run. And looks like we can't reach him with summoning. All right, I guess we're going to have to reach him in regular stance. Please don't run. He's in Raiden camp stance. Ah, moment of truth, and indeed he will stay. Oh, his was is damaged. I just have a badly damaged Arachnorok. His own army ain't in great shape either. This is probably in part to the auto resolve uh, uh, underestimating the various Forsaken, which it probably shouldn't be. But we're used to it. Anyway, Gulator, show Azag the way of things. Alrighty, here we go. We've found Azag at last. Gulator's been on the hunt for a fair while now, but uh, the main army uh, is here. I would imagine that he does have other armies around somewhere, so this won't completely destroy the faction, but I also imagine that the trolls and uh, stuff that's in here, especially by virtue of its veterancy and being very high, we got rank 7s here, for example, have been around in his army for a very long time and are probably his most most powerful stack, so this will be a severe blow to him. And regardless of all that, uh, Archeon is coming, and uh, he will arrive in what's left of Azza Exempire soon enough, so even if Gulator doesn't finish him off, no wink, before then, uh, then Archeon will as well. Uh, now we are going to directly head towards the enemy army, as we usually do with the Frolicking Buponikers in the lead. They're going to get, take a Spirit Leech and I believe a Vindictive Glare as well as I saw one of those go off from the enemy battle lines. 
and they will get hurt, but they always get hurt. Uh, they've been serving their purpose quite well here, and I imagine that they will continue to do so. And Galator will advance in a pretty simple uh, formation of piles of Forsaken, and we will hopefully... And huh. Wait. Oh, for a second I was- I got confused by- <laughs> I got confused by the uh, demon spew uh, having the uh, uh, grayish sort of lobster claws as opposed to the greenish Nurgle ones, and I was just like, wait a second, what the heck happened here? And uh, for some reason it was in my head that the demon spew were the ones that had greenish ones, and I was like, wait, did everybody turn into the demon spew here? But no. Uh, alas, they did not, but nonetheless, uh, keep heading towards him, looks like another spirit leech comes down, this time on Hordred of the Fable Feast, but he does have the uh, a locus of fecundity available to him, so it shouldn't be any kind of issue. All right, as I all right, I'll just speed this up a little bit as we close the distance, perhaps, and the frolicking bubonicers get absolutely pummeled by spells. And by arrows that we are going to... Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, uh, that one actually went for Gulator. Ah, uh, it's going to be meaningless. He has such a gigantic pile of HP here at uh, nearly 16k max on top of his various resistances. 26 ward save, 10 physical, 25 missile, and 10 spell, and all the healing he has. So, really not concerned there. As usual, we pop the upgraded Curse of the Leper on the uh, Frolicking Bubonicus, allowing these guys to do much more damage uh, than uh, you would expect from them. And over in the enemy back lines, we summon uh, that spawn. All right, on top of them, spawn. Are, oh, wow, damn, four of them got knocked down by that uh, vindictive glare. Very nice. Very nice. Well, they're down, but they're certainly not out. I certainly don't uh, think that they lost a model to that. And I do see that Azaik has moved in and has decided to go for Gulator himself. The enemy has also a single hurt Arachnorok spider, and we sent our two named Manticores in to hunt this thing down directly. Rather not allow this thing to apply its lethal toxin to our army. And it certainly won't, as it will get quickly ripped apart and by our two Manticores. Get quickly ripped apart by our two men. You guys had to face away, didn't you? <laughs> you were supposed to bring that down on cue. I think it's actually right out oh, there. It goes all right, fine, 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 fine. And as I himself is down to about half HP, he oh, I didn't mean to pause it. He's still hitting Gulator, but Gulator has popped fleshy abundance on the blob and is perfectly fine. And Hordred of the Fell Feast, uh, Gulator's bodyguard, is whacking away. And as I as well, and here come the pet manticores to help him out. Now, Azag was never going to be sort of the end game for us or the or this army uh, whatsoever. Frankly, I don't even think that the orcs, despite being the end game here or the empire, are actually going to be the end game of the campaign. And in my opinion, the end game will actually be Ulthuan. At this point, they've taken out pretty much anything that threatens them. They're going after Belakor, and they are, uh, by the looks of it, going after Marathi as well, which means that the island is just a huge block of interconnected defensive alliances between, or military alliances, whatever, alliances, uh, between the various elven factions, which means as soon as we declare war on one, we will declare war on all of them. I'm not even sure if the rest of our, uh, if the rest of our, 18 HP left on Azag there, uh, the rest of our armies that we're, <laughs> look at them fly up there, uh, that we're going to send two old one, uh, like Siggy, as part of the original plan, are going to be enough. We may have to wander Archaon over there, or possibly uh, divert a few of the armies that are currently doing other things. It's going to be a lot of elven armies coming at us all at the same time, and they have no enemies there. Unlike the Empire, unlike Azag, unlike any of the Orky factions, or Bretonia, or whatever other factions remain on the map, even the Lustrian factions, everybody has enemies around them, but Ulthuan, having been cleared of Nikari, and having been cleared of pretty much anything around it, is completely safe. So, that'll be pretty interesting, and we are rapidly approaching it as well. And we will have to prepare by getting a few extra armies in there as well, and I do still have ideas for a few more army compositions that we've yet to try. 
Man, there is certainly a lot of content in the uh, uh, available in the Chaos Wars. Anyway, I'm talking about other stuff and not talking about the battle, but the battle is over. The uh, Azag fell as he got chased down by everybody, and the rest of our army is more or less perfectly fine. And a little bit of chasing to do, but we can do the rest off screen. Well done, Gulator. Not so well done. Azag should have probably chosen an easier target. All right, not bad at all. Most of the enemy army is destroyed. Azag has fallen, though I'm sure he'll be back up before his faction is destroyed, as he uh, did take over plenty of the Northern Empire. But nonetheless, Galator once again showing his uh, mastery of the battlefield. The uh, frolicking buboniker's uh, once again also taking the brunt of the damage. But well, that's why we always send the men first, and even if they do eventually meet. The their end. Well, and they will have served their purpose. Uh, otherwise, let's see who did the best here. 106 uh, kills and 17k damage on the Hounds of Pestilence because, of course, uh, 186 and 156 on a couple of the Forsaken, including the Blightwalkers here. Not bad. And, huh, Demon Spew got also 96, but once again they are a regiment of renown, so hardly surprising. Uh, well done, Galator, as always. Oh, and I forgot. Once again, engagement threshold reached our episode this time, and should we get 300 likes and 50 comments? And the next episode will be an hour long as well. Auto resolve the remnant remnants here. Oh, this is gonna hurt our uh, hurt our spawn. We're at 12, 8, 10, 8. Just out of curiosity. 12, 8, 9. Oh, okay, we only lost one. That's not so bad. That's not so bad. I can live with that. If all the auto resolves were like that, then uh, it would be great. More spell resistance for Gulator. I uh, won't complain about that. Up to 35 now. Uh, free power stone, free banner of swiftness as well. And you can set up into march stance and then move past uh, Weissmund. I I mean, we could declare war on the Empire and take this, but uh, I think we'll save that for uh, when Archaon comes around. There's a lot of stuff to do here, after all. Also, Festus, how many more turns? Two turns until we can, can cancel agreements. All right. Well. And then we'll have to wait 10 to confederate him, but uh, that's still not so bad. Otherwise, we are looking good to end the turn, so end the turn we shall by taking a tech, which is going to be the... Rampant Plague Bearers, mostly because Swamp of Souls is just corruption, and frankly, it's kind of useless. Uh, I guess it does give, uh, I guess the Nurglite corruption at least gives growth, but, eh, still relatively useless as far as techs go. And then Death's Bounty for one turn, or for part of a turn, you're going to switch back to, let's go for Brutal Worship to get a War Shrine of Corn up in there, though I suppose at the same time we do need more... Blood letters. Hmm. Let's do one of these. I want at least one War Shrine of Corn available. And then Bloom of Decay, you're going to get swapped out for, I believe, a War Shrine of Nurgle. All War Shrines all the time. This will also give us the ability to start on acquiring Soul Grinders, which we want for our brand new artillery army, which is well underway. Can't wait to use that one, should be pretty fun. Plague Claws and Rattling Guns and Soul Grinders firing away until the enemy reaches the uh, staunch battle line of Nerglite Chaos Warriors. Uh, why did I even click this? Path to Glory for the Chaos Sorcerer of Metal. Yeah, you're probably going to stay a regular Chaos Sorcerer because you can be on a Manticore this way. I mean, we could switch you to a specific... One, but I don't really see the need, especially as this is primarily an undivided army. I mean, Colex. Path to Glory buildings, damage building, outpost upgrades. I will check those between the episodes. Now is not the time. Hey, Supervisor for Gulator means more movement range. Also great. Gotta keep stacking that. Archeon may be at the max, I believe, ish range for uh, how far an army can move, but uh, most other armies aren't. Is it plus 50% or plus 100%? I never remember. Uh, Village Aha, you get an interception here, but you don't need to fight this. And the Mutalits would make quick work of this, and... Okay, we took a little bit more damage than I'd like, but nonetheless. 
At least this way, with that army destroyed, we don't have to go chasing around after them. And we don't have to worry about them killing off that little army that's uh, carrying around our exalted pink horrors. As that would be a shame. What do we have here? Overpowering force gives us 20% tribute from vassals. Unbridled ferocity gives us control plus two. It's not much control. I think I'd rather take the money, even if the money isn't super useful for us. Just out of curiosity, 20% will give us another an extra. 6.3, 6.4k, it's not bad. That's not bad at all. Or 2.3, 2.4k. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, ally attacks army. Oh, they found him. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Is he dead now? Yeah, he's dead now. <laughs> I was going to send... Uh, I was going to send this army over there to acquire that defeat trade, but I guess uh, and Greasy got it. Oh, well. Uh, confederation between the Golden Order and Reichland. Well, we're not technically at war with you. Oh, no, we got the Skaven Plague? Yeah, the freaking Skaven Plague on us. Well, that's a shame. Huh, wait. Are we immune to attrition because we're allies? We should be suffering attrition here now. Huh. Interesting. I don't think I've ever had a Skaven Plague in... I think this guy's in ambush. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a Skaven Plague when allied, so I'm not entirely sure what happens. No, but then Skaven even suffer damage from their own Skaven Plagues, right? So... Yeah. Hm. Okay, Dimahar, Chant, some units are ready. Mission aborted, sadly, for a healing potion, which would have been great, but, uh, well, it was to find and assassinate a hero, and frankly, those are kind of irritating. The missions, I mean. Also, before we start battles, we need to switch back out of Brutal Worship and back to Death's Bounty. And we need to switch out of Contagious Worship and back to Bloom of Decay. Death's Bounty, Bloom of Decay, we don't need to switch Crown of Kings, Whirling Destruction, which was you, for more pink horrors. I mean, yeah, we'll do that, but for now, let's get another Soul Grinder available. And to Winged Watchers, mm, a few useful things here, we could get Flames of Fate as well. I mean, I'm not looking to specifically put any soul grinders into any specific army at the current time, so they're not really needed right now. You know what? Fine. Let's do Flames of Fate. We also do need cockatrices for the flying army and Lords of Change, but now we'll have access to those at least. Samoth, head to Fallen King Mountain. And all the way through to Grom Peak. Bit out of your way, certainly. But if, to, if you have to loop back around to deal with Grimgore, then you have to. And medium casualties, eh? I'm gonna hope medium isn't too bad. I will, however, check if there is a full stack nearby, as that does concern us. No. Hmm. I guess we could send you to Mount Gunbad. Although, I suppose Village is also going down there. Scarsnake is close, but not so close that he can hit us at World's Edge yet. And just to double check, Village. Do we have. Okay, we have two Flamers. We don't have any Pink Horrors available. That's okay. And it's okay, head to World's Edge Archway, and Kagan, you're gonna follow a village along, or you're gonna follow his army. Auto resolve, okay, this one is casualties low, interestingly enough. Go for it, and honestly, I wouldn't call that low, it's like half of our army, but okay. Uh, I just talked about it, I'm not gonna bother repairing it and whatnot. Too much of an issue. War banner for village, maybe he can use it. War coordination target loss, but frankly, the war con coordination has been pretty useless so far. We've told Wolfric to uh, occupy a settlement like a million times, and he never did. I even switched it to Shrine of Ladriel, and instead of occupying it, despite the fact that it was best essentially free real estate, he attacked and suicided upon Blacklight Tower instead. What the heck was the point of that? Man, the allies are useless, or the uh, vassals are a uh, useless, or war coordination is useless. They need to they need to get a work on those, but not a big deal. It's not like we were relying on them to do our work for us anyway, and... Huh? Settlement garrison opportunity to intercept. What are you talking about? Uh, okay. I mean, I guess this army hasn't really fought much, so we could see the flamers in action. It's not really... Doesn't feel like it's worth fighting, but at the same time, and just for fun. Since this army hasn't really fought much, eh, why not? Why not? Uh, let's do this little fight. Since it is apparently a Pyrrhic victory, we do have a Phoenix Guard unit to contend with, who have 
Surprisingly no fire resistance. Well, that's going to be ugly for you because we have an exalted flamer, which uh, will be just for you. Away we go. Here we go. Oh, look at the, look at our three uh, Zinchin sorcerers riding together. Isn't that nice? They're working together. In true harmony. Anyway, here we go. It's going to be a relatively small battle, I imagine. But, hey, I always love watching Zinchin armies fight, as they are just so flashy. They've got great spell work. they got flamer units, which are always just so fun to watch, especially when they're cooking uh, knife ears. And, of course, uh, the uh, this army will function very differently from Village's army, so uh, that's quite nice as well. And, in fact, once again, we are going to get rid of all the pink horrors in this army and replace them with more flamer units because this is the flamer army and damn well will it have plenty of flames and plenty of friendly fire i imagine but hey call it a rite of passage anybody who wants to truly follow the raven god uh, to follow the path of the changer must be touched must be burnt um, by warp fire which changes things on a molecular level and the and survive the uh, and survive the encounter, I suppose. Anyway, speaking of warp fire, it continues both from our flamers of Zinch and both from our uh, pink horrors as well. And the elves are not having a great time with it, nor are they having a great time uh, with the charges in the back from our marauder horses. Some of the marauder horses will get cooked and by our own units. Speaking of that friendly fire, but that's all right. Like I said, tis a rite of passage. Uh, those uh, warp fire flames. Anyway, the battle is is very much going in our way already at about 85 maybe closing in on 90 percent in our favor we are by and large targeting the most elite units first so it is the uh, uh it is the not the archers but the okay i can't find them here anymore because most of them are dead. Ah, white lines. There's the way one white line unit. There was another one running around there somewhere, but I think it's in uh, too bad shape uh, to look upon it at this point. The Phoenix Guard are still holding, though. Well, so there's that for them. We do activate Sacrifice, and it does make the uh, battle look a little bit more corny than it does Zinchi by virtue of the uh, red uh, sort of uh, particle effect coming in from the Sacrifice, but it does make it nice and atmospheric. I actually don't recall what it looks like when you use Nurgle's Miasma of Pestilence in combination with Sacrifice from one of the Marauders. I gotta make sure to do that, although it might make the screen go crazy and with particle effects. Anyway, the Phoenix Guard continue to hold their ground for a little while longer, despite their lack of fire resistance. Probably very much in jealousy of the Dragon Princes who ridiculously have more fire resistance uh, than Kadai Fireborn do. <laughs> or at least uh, they did in vanilla. I remember often remarking upon that in uh, my uh, Zatan campaign. How are demons that are made out of fire? Okay, well, Okay, Kadai aren't, Kadai aren't really demons in so far as they are, well, they're sort of, like, trapped, uh, they're trapped demons, they're not demons of Hushut, let's say that, they're trapped demons in the form and that they take bound by the Chaos Dwarfs, and they're not really sentient in the same way and that demons are, but I digress, no Kadai rant today, we'll save that for another time, perhaps when we get some of them in our own uh, armies, anyway, it looks like the Battle is ours, the last of the Phoenix Guard get gunned down, or fired down, or cooked down, rendered by the, uh, uh, by the Pink Horrors of Zinch and the rest of the army will need a little chasing, but we can do that off screen. Like I said, Zinch, nice and flashy. All right, nice little fight. I think what happened there was the game considered it as if we were trying to pass through the port and thus allowed the enemy an interception rather than us directly attacking the settlement. Uh, hence the interception thing. 
usually doesn't happen as usually you could just land directly and attack the enemy but uh, well that doesn't really change anything and my bad about keeping the exalted hero on the chariot i didn't realize that he had leveled up to that point and yeah we're fine to take this all right just out of resolve this hopefully lethanar doesn't have a full stack nearby get ourselves another armor of damnation which is okay and we're gonna occupy the place I just talk about. I don't know where you're gonna go if you second and a free giant blade at that. Jaeger, hold on to that armor for now. And oh, the giant blade was from Prophet, which now activates the control for 20 turns. Is gonna be real nice. Same with the winds of magic power reserve counteracting the debuff from draining winds, and effectively zeroing it out and obviously casualty replenishment rate is always nice to have and i wouldn't say no to blood frenzy and i don't think corn would either at uh, the 541 research after that but still that two turns per so and doesn't change much also i haven't seen any skull islands but honestly we're making such good money now that uh, the skull islands probably wouldn't matter all that much either anyway let's keep moving everybody else around archie you're headed to karakaraziag do we have defenders here i have some that's probably gonna hurt our giants again um, uh, there's not much we can do about it uh build the gold mine even though we will transfer it to this is gonna take yeah about half hp from the giants he used to it now and uh, keep uh, the place good at least with the additional healing, they will heal, if not quite to full, get in there. I do see a Dwarven Rebel army at Karak Drin, which might be worth attacking, though. And we shall see. Uh, into exploit vessels for you, Archie. And I think this is... You have essentially reached the edge of where Azag's territory is. We could start attacking Vlad. By the looks of it, he has pretty much the entire empire. He's strength rank 3, he's got 28 settlements, yeah. Well done to Vlad, I gotta say, he's only at war with the Golden Order, the remnants of the Empire, now that they have confederated Karl Franz, and Balthazar Gelt holds Altdorf, and he's also at war with the Deceivers, sure, sure, ow, oh, wait, we haven't even met the Deceivers, ah oh, man, how are we gonna vassalize them, that's a question, <laughs> Oh, but oh well. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go. With Zazel, I'm gonna have you move to Clark Karond rather than to Temple of Addeoth for now, mostly so that you can get Hudakai in your army soon. Clearly not now. This is gonna cause medium casualties. Ow. Oh. Why do they have such a solid garrison? Three Ushabti and two Tomb Scorpions and a bunch of Tomb Guard? I remember the last time I played the... Oh, it's a Tier 4 settlement. And it has a, a Tomb Scorpion building. Yeah, I remember the last time I played the uh, Tomb Kings and uh, wasn't particularly happy with the... S not the settlements, but... Well, yes, with the settlements, specifically with the defenses available to those settlements. Uh, can we risk this doing medium casualties to Azazel's army is the question. Once again, we don't know whether there's another stack nearby. Here's what we'll do. We'll move Kudakai here. We'll have Azazel take Venom Glade anyway, and I don't see an army there. I also don't see signs of an encampment nearby. We could also try this. Go to work coordination. Ah. I was hoping that there was a mission that would enable us to target specifically uh, uh, Katep and thus know where he is on the map by virtue of that, but it looks like that's not available to us. Siggy, you're headed to the monoliths. What I want Siggy to do, specifically, 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 ah, no, it didn't work. It didn't work. Just ignore me. <laughs> Uh, all right, I ought to resolve that, and just like that, uh, Manticore for Edgelord Hudakai, great for him. Oh, that reminds me. You, no chariot, please. I'll go for the Manticore for now. Maybe I'll put a Cockatrice in this army, maybe I won't, depending on how much space we have with the gifted units, because we would have to get rid of the Pink Horrors, but I don't want Pink Horrors in this army anyway. They're just here temporarily, holding the space for Flamers, so, yeah. Uh, what I want Siggy to do is move through Black Forest and then the Twisted Glade, and then go to Bellacor and land at Kinkwata, and at the same time as we attack Kinkwata, we hit the Palace of Ruin and Kawark at the same time with this army, plus... Uh, uh, plus a Jaeger who's gonna move back around that way and thereby vassalize or confederate a Bellacor. Alright, Azaz, I'm gonna take a risk with you. Don't screw me on this. And about half HP damage. Well, uh, let's hope that you don't get hit by multiple armies. Captain. 
And if you do, I guess let's hope that you survive. We'll get the Cultist Camp of Wood, even though it's not particularly useful. And frankly, I'd be perfectly willing to trade it to an allied faction. Because they probably can do more with it than we can. Gulator. A user are... Is it Dwarf Rebels? In Middenstag? Why are there Dwarf Rebels here? Well, that's odd. That's quite odd. Huh. Of all the rebels, I would have expected chaos because uh, uh, because of the chaos corruption nearby. Possibly undead, even though there is no undead corruption, but at least there's more present. Why would it be dwarf rebels? I guess it is dwarf rebels because it's an orky territory. I just kind of think of it as an empire territory, but either way. Ah, oh, look at that. Carl under the banner of guilt. Anyway, I'll resolve the rebels just for the free buffs, and you know what? I take kill captives just for a slightly easier auto resolve. And we got ourselves a Book of Assure. Hmm. I wonder if the Book of Assure might be the better choice on. Oh, look at that. Hawkland rebels are trying to revive. I wonder if the Book of Assure might be a better choice than the Trickster Shard on Archeon. This appears to be something that the game wants us to fight as well. Okay, that's fine. And we can fight it. Kolik, set sail, my friend. It's gonna be a while, and we still haven't had the endgame announcement, so... meaning it's at minimum 11 turns, and in 11 turns, Kolik can be in, uh... Kolik can be in Katha, or not in Katha, well, he'll, he can pass through Katha, and then he can be in... Uh... Scouting. Uh, he can be... In Lustria, Kuchar, you don't have much movement left after all that. Stay in camp so that you can heal up to full before you set sail. Uh, what the rank do we need for the Gore Beasts? Eh, rank 5, it's not so bad. We can reach there fairly reasonably quickly, let's say. Alright, Valkia. What do we have for you? You can reach Rothgar Spire, or actually you probably can't. I'm willing to bet if we put Lothar Blood Reaper into your army, you won't be able to move far. Yeah, that completely destroys your movement range, but you can go right to the edge of it. I'm not making the same mistake, though. Go right here, and then we'll hit Lothar, Lothar Rothgar Spire afterwards. Also, any more runners or horsemen? No, alas, not. Hmm, okay. We could put, put, put a uh, more Shrine of Corn in here. Yeah, but then it won't have Vanguard deployment, so it wouldn't be able to keep up with the uh, uh, with the Chaos Warriors in this army, and it certainly wouldn't be able to keep up with the Skull Crushers. So there isn't much there isn't much purpose, is there? That's fine. All right, we'll ignore that and then let's continue. Hey, Jaeger is good, Valky is good, Malefex Rune Smasher. You get places to be. Maybe grab a few islands on your way down to uh, the south. And Nareth Magoth. Ooh. And while you're not quite ready, you're getting ready. And let's start moving, yeah. You've got places to be as well. Uh, what we do need... Let's see, you are a sorcerer... Oh, right, I'm just going to replace you. Uh, I was going to replace you with a Chaos Lord of Death. So I guess we'll go with Chant. Oh, Demahar's back up and running. Swell. Uh, we'll go with Chant. And then chant, you will be Nurglified. I guess probably devote to Nurgle, because I'm not 100% sure that we'll have room in this particular army for a uh, uh, for a war shrine. Although we might, we could do five soul grinders in a war shrine. We don't have to necessarily do six soul grinders. Devote to Nurgle either way. And you're gonna evolve to a demon prince eventually. You got Horde. Casual tier punishment rate bonus for Nurglings and buffs for Nurglings. Huh. Wasn't expecting that. I mean, we could put Nurglings in this army. I'm not sure that there is too much point. Oh, wow. You get a free regen just from winning five battles? That's insane. Well, great for you. Uh, Purple Sin of Zareus bound if you rank up in channeling stance. Sure. Otherwise, we get moving. You know what? Let's... Uh, Let's put you into channeling stance. He might rank up over the... I probably won't, actually. I lied. I was wondering if Crown of Kings might level him, because he's only level 2. But he's not getting, like, 20 or 1500 XP from that. There's no way. Uh... So it doesn't matter. Anyway, Chant. 
you are either going to the Eastern Colonies or you're going to set sail and start fighting the court of Libaras. I would imagine that your artillery should be pretty darn good against the... Uh, against the Tomb Kings, although I do hesitate to... Hmm... Now the problem will be protecting the rattling guns from Ushapti spawning right on top of them and ripping them apart. And I guess, to a degree, the same thing for the Plague Claw catapults. But not a big deal. Chant, I guess, since you can't go over there anymore, you will stay around here for a little bit. You need to keep collecting horsemen. Because you're gonna need a lot of, uh... Well, them. And Doom Knights aplenty. And you're definitely going to need an exalted hero because without one, you won't be able to uh, uh, you won't be able to level them up quick enough. I might get another lord, or may, you know what? Maybe we'll run him through this territory right here and collect all the horsemen on the way, and then move southward. Also, hmm, do we have another capacity for an exalted hero? I did want to see if we could get a better one in Valkyria's army. No, we don't. I did start building a building, but I guess it ain't ready yet. Master of Seals, let's move you to Kislev. And speaking of Kislev, so it looks like Tarina Katrin destroyed Throg's army, sacked Fort Strask, or possibly just destroyed Throg's army, or possibly sacked Fort Strogoff, lost most of her army, completely ignoring Prague, which was undefended. What the heck are you doing, Kislev? Ah, uh, I guess our own allies aren't the only ones afflicted by idiocy. Also, AU need to be replaced by Mr. Demahar. There we go, Demahar Crow Brother, path to glory, devote to corn, please. And let's see if you got anything decent out of that. Uh, well, I guess if we're gonna send you to Demonhood at level 20, it doesn't really matter what we got for you, so it doesn't matter. Oblivion to Slanesh, but we'll get rid of that as soon as we send you to Corn. so none of that matters for you as yet. But you are on the field, and which is great. Anyway, I believe that was the last move we had to make, so now we can do another quick little fight with, uh, uh, with Mr. Gulator. I guess we've returned to Gulator screen time episodes, because, well, he had plenty throughout the campaign. I guess today is another Gulator day. Would anybody complain about a Gulator day, though? He is, like, a, the pseudo-main character of this uh, campaign. And he's nearly at a level with Archeon, just, like, five levels away. Go. Alrighty, Galator looking pretty good as always up on that war shrine as he makes his uh, glorious pre-battle speech, uh, exulting in the name of Nurgle. But anyway, here we go. I didn't realize that this was a minor settlement there for a second, or at least I had forgotten it, uh, in the space between uh, looking at the settlement and starting the battle. But I am glad that it is one, as it'll make the battle a little bit more fun. Uh, certainly a little bit more fun than a field battle against these forces as they would would then have not much of a chance. We also got to remember that regardless of what units the enemy has as part of the garrison, they have the ability to A, summon bony boys, and B, summon units of biggins, I don't know in how many numbers, uh, in their uh, in their settlement as well due to the defensive structure that they have. I think it's up to like five biggins, but it depends on the level of the structure and possibly some technologies as well. Uh, kind, of, uh, kind of not completely remembering. Also, Usually, 99% of the time, in this particular settlement map, I pretty much always attack it from this side, making use of these two choke points, simply because the main capture point, the key building, that holds pretty much all the significant towers and the best position is up here. But just to make it a little bit different, I decided to attack here, just so that it looks different from what it normally does in this particular battle. Anyway, the battle starts off with uh, where Manticore is ripping the enemy tower down as a tier. 4 tower and thus will do explosive damage into the middle of our ranks of uh, Forsaken, or at least it would have if it had the chance. Uh, Gulator will lead one sort of portion of our army while Hordred of the Fowl Feast will lead the rest, though of course if Gulator gets in trouble his uh, 
Uh, his uh, ride or die buddy will uh, join him. Anyway, Goldtor will briefly move in here, but we'll uh, sort of separate them in a second. Anyway, here we go. Miasma of Pestilence coming down in the blob of enemies here, and I don't think that they're going to have too much fun with that, but, uh, well, the Nurglites will. Once again, gotta love the uh, animations from those war shrines hanging onto the railing and bonking folks as they do. The sorcerer's riding up there, I mean. There we go. Ah, very nice, very nice. And it is a very different animation from when the uh, actual war shrine itself attacks, when it sort of moves forward uh, like a ship in the sea amongst the enemy infantry. Anyway, it looks like the enemy will be holding on to both of these choke points for a while. Uh, Hordred has taken this side, especially because the enemy Black Orc, Big Boss, is down here. Though I don't imagine he stands too much of a chance against Hordred. And will in fact get defeated by him uh, with a little bit of help from our little uh, friend as uh, Slime Trail there. So good job to you two and continue ripping uh, these bony boys down here apart. Looks like the enemy Black Orc Big Boss uh, did summon them to help him out. And, but they were certainly not enough to carry the day. And Golator continues leading the biggest portion of our uh, units uh, fighting from the front as he tends to do. It's a lot safer for the uh, Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle to do so on that a war shrine of Nurgle and due to the self-healing and the uh, buffs from Nurgle then it would be for any of the other war shrines really and like our war shrines of uh, Solanish will always be vulnerable to a bunch of stuff uh, but Nurgle not so much in fact he's uh, gone a little bit further from the rest of his army we do have to keep him close though so that he continues to provide the uh, healing effect from the uh, from the War Shrine. Or wherever it may be in that pile of... Uh, in that pile of passives. Anyway, continue making our way forward. Not much to say tactically about this battle, other than the fact that we do have to slowly uh, grind our way through the uh, choke points. But hey, attrition is the name of the game for Nurgle, and uh, he knows how to win it. Though I suppose the same can be often said of thing of the Greenskins. So, uh, perhaps they'll give him a run for his money, Hordred and... or Gulator, I mean starting to confuse the two because they're together so often Alrighty, and it looks like Hordred's having plenty of fun on his own up here. Plenty of enemy uh, biggins have either been summoned or come out to play and both of our manticores have decided to stay with Hordred as frankly, Gilator at this point doesn't really need them. Without the enemy lord to uh, threaten him they're better off adding their damage to this pile there's a nice little melee going on. I like how it's, uh, I like how this particular melee is just sort of like a, a big old blob of units fighting each other. There's no little, uh, there's very little rhyme or reason to it. Disciplined, undisciplined rather, a rabble of orcs facing off against the frenzied piles of Forsaken and, uh, uh, and Spawn. I guess slightly frenzied uh, Manticores as well. Although I'd like to think that these two are reasonably tame. I like to imagine that uh, the uh, the two manticores sort of sleep on the uh, war shrine. Look, there's two convenient little uh, sleeping areas for them right there. So, uh, yeah. And Golotor sits up here and he has two manticores living on his uh, war shrine with him constantly. And then they, uh, they do his bidding as needed. Alrighty. Too bad war shrines can't have crew in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what uh, uh, what a crew of manticores would do for you, and since they don't have ranged attacks. But anyway, it looks like there is a barricade over on this side, so that's going to take a little bit of time to work through. So we're going to continue watching this portion of the battle. It looks like more of the enemy bony boys have been summoned to join the fray, and there's still plenty of orcs uh, to work our way through. It looks like uh, actually this time it's Hordred that got the tougher portion of the battlefield. Although I suppose it may be tougher by virtue of the fact that we haven't had uh, several uses of damaging spells to clear out the enemy. And that's another summon, I believe, even more bony boys. Damn. Azag may be down. Hunted down by Gulator, but his bony boys are still providing plenty of help here. Uh, 
<laughs> just enjoying the melee at this point. Once again, uh, there isn't much to say tactically about this particular battle. It's just good old-fashioned attrition, but this is uh, uh, its a nice thing to have periodically. We did keep our uh, doggos in the back, mostly to be able to chase down enemies that escaped from the fray. And ooh, looks like we did finally manage to break our way through that barricade, which means we can finally move forward into, uh, well, what remains of the enemy over on this side of the battlefield. We actually had a curiosity. Gulator, how much damage have you dealt so far? 36 and nearly, yeah, about 36k. Alright, we haven't had the chance to drop any big spells like a blight boil on top of big blobs of enemies this battle. But it was more fight to fight it. It was more fight. It was more fun to fight our way through them. Anyway, and fight our way through them we did, as it looks like the last of the enemy units uh, begin to break. Summoned or not, it was just not enough to hold back uh, the uh, the encroaching tide of Nurglites. Very nice. Once again, I think that the Forsaken of Nurgle, like, we, we essentially had a choice at the beginning, because uh, I probably wasn't going to have more than one Forsaken plus spawn army, and I think Nurgle was the appropriate way to go, and mostly because of the uh, healing or the regeneration on these guys, plus the combination of the Cloud of Flies available to both units, which is great. And Gulator has certainly uh, done a great work with them, and plus I like the fact that we uh, we got to use the Mant Cores in here as well, which do provide more poison and keep with the theme of the army. Anyway, a uh, decisive victory for us, easy a little fight, or at least decently so, and we got plenty of action shots, which is nice. Slanesha Giggle, go. Alrighty, another nice little fight, and kill-wise, looks like we got plenty. It isn't really reflected in the screen at only 1800, but all of these summons, uh, whether it be the biggins from the... Uh uh, from the enemy faction ability, or no, wait, faction ability would be the bony boys or the biggins from the uh, defensive uh, structures. Anyway, plenty of kills on everybody, but it looks like 34k damage on the one of the unnamed, the only unnamed spawn of Nurgle. Uh, showing that they can, uh, uh, they can still fight regardless of the... Uh, uh, regardless of the like of the name, Slime Trail got 215 kills as well, very very nice, and it looks like Dan with the Sickness and an unnamed unit of Forsaken, and did the best out of those, and of course the Demon Spew, but pretty much always, and Gulator at 38k, very nice, and uh, we're gonna occupy the place. Dauntless for Gulator. Well, I don't think either of those really matter all that much to him, but the Sword of Bloodshed is a very nice pickup, one of the uh, uh, stronger blue items in terms of just pure stats, so uh, not too bad at all. Anyway, how is Azag looking now that we've... Uh, uh, now that we've applied ourselves to his faction? Ten settlements remaining. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the tenth one must be right here in Kemperbad. All right. Well, he's in pretty darn bad shape. Of course, he will revive in like something turns, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty okay. Anyway, I do believe we are. I was about to say ready to end the turn, but that's not actually quite true. We still need to do buildings. Though it's probably not that much, and that, the Fortress of the Damned, you're ready to go to Tier 4, very nice. And Imperial Road, you're also ready to go to Tier 4, okay, these are going to get expensive quickly. Although I guess all of our structures are expensive, but at the same time, if money doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter. Uh, Bloodwind Keep, yes. Strategy Chamber, let's upgrade the Flesh Tapestry for a little bit more growth loot heap for you. You need to catch up in growth after all. And... I mean, I guess you could get the thralls, but you know what? Let's get a let's get a fighter's lodge here instead. Another exalted hero capacity. I've been trying to get these everywhere, and maybe by the end game, I'll actually just delete all those buildings because we probably won't need to build any more exalted heroes at some point, and just hope that I don't accidentally lose any. But at least that way they won't be taking up too much space. Is this an undivided shrine? Yes, indeed it is. We will still want a few more of these, I think. 
Why did I decide to go with the Undivided Shrine here? Oh, it's for the Casualty Punishment rate. Faction-wide. Yeah, we'll need to build a few of those and probably a few of the uh, Selenashi ones as well for the movement range. You can build Worshippers here or Thralls. Oh, you need the Vassal Emissary here as well for the Public Order. All right, we'll start with the Vassal Emissary. And Middenheim, you're already ready to upgrade to the next tier. Lovely for you. Obsidian Peaks doesn't really matter what we do here. And let's not collect income at any of these ones. And just so that I can tell uh, Dark Fortresses apart from, well, non-Dark Fortresses. And just piles of uh, smaller settlements. I guess we should probably do the same here, but then again, it's a little bit of cash. Hmm... It's like an extra 300 gold per turn. I just keep it as it is, especially while we're gaining a lot of additional free public order. And uh, speaking of gaining a lot of additional free public order, we still got to do the Demon Blade quest for Azazel. As soon as he ends a turn with a decent amount of HP remaining, and that's what we'll do. Anyway, and double check Diplo real quick. Uh, Wintertooth and Shadow Legion and Clan Verms are the only ones that want to talk. Shadow Legion is actually willing to become our vassal. I really feel like you should be, if you, sh if you can vassal them directly you should be able to confederate directly it's a little bit weird that they're that they're willing to be vassals but they're not willing to be confederated you know what i mean if you have access to the one via diplomacy then you should probably have access to the other especially considering the vassals have little to no autonomy here um bloody hands bone rattlers and crooked moon all want peace but there can be no peace as they will uh, uh, they will just declare war on us at the end game. Anyway, uh, skip, skip, path to glory, building upgrades, damage buildings, outposts, and the turn. Though we are probably out of time in terms of fighting another battle. Where is this? Hag Grief. Uh, oh. Well, they got around the arm. Well, that's a little bit annoying. Uh, should have just given it to... Uh, should have just given it to Nagron. You know what? Maybe I'll tell Nagron directly to occupy it, though. Whether they listen to the order remains to be seen. We don't really care about its occupation anyway. Peace treaty with the Crooked Moon. No, thank you. Not much purpose. And now oh, look at that, Tretch. Now you're moving up. Well, we told him to capture uh, uh, that territory ages ago. He just sat in Crookback Mountain doing absolutely nothing. And now that we've captured it ourselves, he just decided to move up here. And great. Champions Arena for additional character XP. We do still need to evolve a few to Demon Princes after all. And... Pet the Glory for Hexus. Summon Lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ally loses outpost. Ally begins outpost. Great for Ally. Malekith. You're already moving towards it? Well then, good for you. Hopefully these guys don't just uh, move for Kragroth Deep, because we actually want to keep that one. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, rampant Plague Bearers are ready to go. Master of Seals got a cultist. We got another student for our trouble, and we're still at two. But... Near to Virulent Blessings, which is by far the best one, it seems. It gives regeneration to aspiring champions, in addition to the second gift of uh, and Nurgle. Probably better than any of the others. Well, Gate of Zinsha is pretty good as well. It, it, this is actually what makes me think that we may want to get uh, uh, aspiring champions rather than Chaos Warriors or Chosen of Zinch in Village's army here. And just because they can open up gates and summon more pink horrors on the field. But that'll be a consideration for another day. As for now, we are basically out of time. So I think I'm going to call the episode here. There's a little bit of admin to do that I can take care of uh, between the episodes. And then... Still on Death's Bounty and Crown of Kings and Lunum of Dick. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, take care of the admin next time. Archeon, I guess, is done dealing with Azag out here. We will actually have to find ourselves another enemy. And oh, and this guy's probably moving to retake Karakungar. We also have to figure out who we transfer all of these territories to. Because transferring them to the uh, Chaos Doors will be pretty useless. Although, hmm. Howling Rock is actually generating fairly decent amounts of cash, surprisingly. Actually much better than the Norskins, but then at the same time, if we take a look at the Gates of Jar, they're generating zero. Yeah, so they could generate decent money, or they could generate barely any money at all. 330, 215, zero again. Hmm. A bit odd. We could give a bunch of stuff in the mountains to Tretch, I suppose. But we need him to actually occupy stuff. But anyway, that'll be a consideration for next time. We'll also start moving our uh, our new artillery army southward. 
and hopefully we'll get some playtime with it relatively soon. So stay tuned for all that. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold. More Archaeon to come. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.